Welcome to Conversations with Zaiki Baruti, with your host, Zaiki Baruti. And like always, I want to give a shout out to my biological family. What's happening to the Universal African People's Organization? What's going on? And as well as to the New Life Evangelistic Center family, headed by Reverend Rice, keep up the great work. And a shout out to our cameraman, Bob. On that note, uh, this evening's show uh, is with a special guest of mine. So, uh, he works uh, very diligently in the community, uh, helping and uh, uh, assisting those uh, who are in need. And that's none other than Pastor Mark. Welcome to Conversations Thank with you. Zaki Thank you, Zaki. Okay, then. When we began our show, we always like to share with our thousands of uh, uh, listening audience uh, a little bit about the guests. Okay. So share, you know, whatever you want people to know, you know, your background, where you grew up at, uh, whatever, you know, in terms okay. of your life so people know who you are. Okay. Um, I met Reverend Rice when I was 16 years old. Um, I was a person that knew Christ uh, but didn't have Christ inside my own heart. So therefore, I consider myself to be homeless. And I came to New Life at 16, uh, and I learned a lot. Uh, about God, I learned a lot about life, uh, and uh, that was when Reverend Rice had his first wife, Penny Rice, when they first started the organization. And I saw all kinds of different miracles happen. I saw lives being changed. I saw uh, people uh, submitting to Christ, and I enjoyed that kind of work, helping people, helping the homeless. When New Life first started, it's the same thing, thing as today. We did everything we could to help the poor and to help the needy. There were times that the staff at that time did not eat because we had to feed the homeless. We had to feed the poor. Uh, and then I went back, I was too young, I was 16, so I had to go back to school. And I went back to high school and later college and came back to New Life. And what high school now. did you go, uh, graduate from? I graduated from McKinley here McKinley in St. Louis. McKinley in St. Louis, right. okay. And McKinley is closed now, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Okay. And, uh, and what, what school did you graduate from college-wise? University of Texas. I didn't fully graduate. I went to, to my third year. I was studying journalism and uh, decided that I wanted to dedicate my life to Christ. Now, let me get a point of clarification. Now, you said that you first met Reverend Rice at the age of 16. Yes. And were you, did I hear you right? It was in a stage of homelessness for yourself? I was homeless and spiritually. Oh, right. spiritual. Right. And my mother thought I was crazy when I said, I'm going to go join Reverend Rice. <laughs> right? Because Reverend Rice wasn't well known then. Uh -huh. right? And she's like, are you sure this is what you want to do? And I knew I had to serve God. Right? I knew I needed God in my life, and I, needed, and I needed to help people. I wanted to help people. And this is the amazing thing about Reverend Rice. You know, you, you say he's a visionary. Before I had to go back to high school, uh, he told me this. Now, this is the very beginning of the ministry, so he had to actually pay for his radio show to be on uh, radio, right? And he told me this uh, before I left to go back to high school. So Reverend Rice had a radio show then, prior right? To he had a radio show, right? He had oh, a radio okay. show when I, I first met him, right? But okay. he had to pay for it to be on radio, right? Uh -huh. He didn't have radio stations in his right. Right. right? So Reverend Rice told me, he says, you know what? He said, Mark, I, I am going to get a TV station. He says, I'm going to have centers throughout Mid America. He says, and I'm going to have radio stations too. And this, none of this has happened. None of this has happened. Right? I told you he had to pay for his show to be put on, on the air. Right. Right? So God gave him this vision, and he shared it with me before I, I, I had to leave to go back to high school. Right? So I left, went to high school, went to school, and came back, and I'm traveling back to, to Missouri. And I'm seeing shelters here in New Life's name, shelters here in New Life's name. I'm seeing radio stations. I'm seeing two, two TV stations. Right? So this is how God rewards you if you're faithful to him right? and you have a heart for the homeless. Absolutely. So in terms of, uh, by your experience with Reverend Rice, it's been twofold. You say in terms of a greater understanding of Christ, right. uh, as well as uh, a greater appreciation for the work of being done to help the homeless, yes. right? Yes, So uh, in your capacity working back with him after mm -hmm. you went through school, so what, what kind of period of time has that been? Uh, well, I've, I've returned back to New Life maybe three times. This is my third time uh, returning back to New Life. But the one thing that's unique about New Life is that it always has its arms open, right? They always are willing to embrace me uh, and welcome me as, as family. Um, and I could tell you some different stories uh, about Reverend Rice. I don't think he remembers all these stories, right? But our, our adventures together. Uh, there was one time that it was snowing really, 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 really bad, and this man was walking in the snow. He was homeless, and he was barefooted, right? So we asked him first. We stopped, and we asked him, do you, do you need a ride? 
And he says, no, I don't need a ride. I'm just going to walk in this snow with my bare feet. So Reverend Rice said, well, wait a minute. He said, you don't have to walk in that snow with your bare feet. He said, do you want to hop in? He goes, no, I don't want to hop in. He says, right, just leave me alone. So Reverend Rice got out, right, took his Texas cowboy boots off, right, and gave them to the man. And wow. made sure the man put the Texas cowboy boots on. So the man continued. He didn't want to ride from us, but at least he was walking with Texas cowboy boots in the snow. Wow. Right? So that's how much Reverend Rice really does love the poor and the homeless. Right, right. And in fact, you know, I've been on several missions with him uh, mm -hmm. back uh, as they were searching for some of the homeless along the Mississippi uh, region yeah. for a period of time. Uh, and you, you, you took me back to, you talking in terms of an influence that Reverend Rice had, uh, a great influence that he impacted me, and I just shared a recent dinner Mm -hmm. was that I had one of those Jesus moments, I'm going to call, with him, for mm -hmm. real, for all my Islamic friends and uh, what have you friends. Uh, it was a one heck of an experience, and I'm going to share it, but I'm going to need to go to uh, have a break okay. for the other side because right. it's a minute of uh, knowledge, okay? okay. All right. On that note, uh, we're going to take a quick break. As many of you know, Zakiba Rudy is such a friend of the downtrodden the poor and the needy. He's, been, he's a long-term personal friend of mine also. And we've been involved in many, many activities, demonstrations together. And I'm so excited for all of you that have caught the vision, that care about those in need, and are helping to support Zakeep Rudy's show. And that's all possible because of your special gifts to the New Life Evangelistic Center. And I want to encourage you to send it now and then request uh, a copy of the book, Through the Fire. Through the Fire. Uh, it's an exciting book that telling you how God is moving in spite of the opposition to get 1411 Locust open back up again. In fact, your Christmas gift will help us do just that to get it open at this particular time. And that's why I'm asking you to send that gift and request a copy of the book. Everyone who shares the gift of $10 or more, we want to get this book out to you that helps us with postage and handling and the cost of printing the book. And you can send it to New Life Evangelistic Center, P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, that's 63166. Helps us to get 14 level locusts open back up. Please continue to pray for the work of New Life Evangelistic Center. And please share your much needed gift now with New Life Evangelistic Center. Every dollar you share provides $3 of direct support because of our dedicated team of volunteers and staff. It's very important we hear from you now. And uh, all the gifts of $10 and more, please request a copy of the book. We'd love to send it to you through the fire. And that's to New Life Evangelistic Center, P.O. Box 470, uh, 473, St. Louis, Missouri, 63166. Let's keep the dream alive. Let's keep the movement alive. Let's do it. We can do it. We will do it as we prepare to move into a new year. If each one of you will pray and share that much-needed gift now and know that your gift is helping so many people. For the outcast all alone for the man without a home For that desperate heart that gives their soul away In the hope they'll be held close And for the sad neglected wife For the man life has passed by for that rejected man who's dying all alone For the way he lived his life There is hope There is Welcome back to Conversations with Zaki Baruti in studio with me is Pastor Mark, who is a avid supporter and works with New Life Evangelistic Center in an effort to uplift uh, the homeless and those who are unfortunately, uh, you know, um, doing kind of bad in our society, yes. our society of affluence. But on the other side, Reverend Marks, uh, Pastor Marks, I uh, was ma mentioning about uh, how I was impacted by Reverend Rice, uh, what I call my spiritual moment. And I have a news clipping of it. What happened was uh, several years back, <clears throat> a young black woman had went to St. Mary's Hospital complaining of pain, mm -hmm. severe pain. Mm -hmm. I think she had been to a couple other uh, hospitals. 
and that boy being seen by the medical administrators, they said they couldn't uh, find nothing wrong with her. So uh, said that you are discharged. She said she was in too much pain, wasn't going nowhere, and that they got to do something for her. In the meantime, the hospital officials called the police. Uh, I think it was the Maplewood police. They came, snatched out of the wheelchair, threw in the car, took it to the jail. Two hours later, she was dead. I think that was sometime mm -hmm. like in September of that particular year. Mm -hmm. So I guess Reverend Wright, somebody informed her, uh, him about it. So he was organizing a demonstration mm -hmm. that was to meet in front of the St. Louis County government building on South Central and march from there to the hospital, you know, dealing with uh, the case uh, on right. both the lack of care that she received at the hospital and what may have happened at the jail set. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm walking, I say I live in, you said I'm gonna walk up there, you know, mm -hmm. support the cause right. and walk uh, another mile down to the hospital, to get my exercise in and you know. <laughs> in the meantime, mm -hmm. that morning on the, there was some radio talk program where Reverend B.T. Rice, a black minister was on. Yes talking about the case, and uh, so in my mind, I'm assuming black ministers were gonna be there. Right. And uh, so uh, I walk up there, you know, and I see about 70, 100 people there, but it was no, I didn't know you at that time, but no right. black ministers that I knew of, uh -huh. you know, there. And, I, and Reverend Rice being, you know, white, and right. for a sister, I just see it as a black man, right. I could not just allow him to, cause he had this big cross. Right. Right. Gigantic cross, <laughs> that, and it was on a Good Friday. I failed to mention that on a Good Friday, uh -huh. okay. and he was going to take the, use the cross symbolically of Jesus walking with the cross on behalf of the people and what have you. Right. Mm -hmm. And so to that end, you know, I just couldn't let him carry the cross by himself. So I volunteered <laughs> to help carry that cross. And in my brain, you know, in terms of on the spiritual level, mm -hmm. just imagine in terms of the story of Christ as yes. believed by thought millions, that uh, it must have been a real painful experience yes. walking there with the thorns on your head, people, yeah. and then being crucified. So that's yeah. why I call my Jesus the moment. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Right? So on that level, you know, I know you've been out in uh, in the streets with Reverend Rice. Share some other experiences in terms of dealing with the homeless. Well, we talked about the, the the man who did not want to uh, uh, continue to want to walk in the snow barefooted. There's other instances too. Uh, now we do have a, and they've been doing this for years. Uh, it's called the Homeless Patrol or Winter Patrol, and mostly with Reverend Ray. Right, and uh, Reverend Ray has been diligent about going out and helping to the highways and byways. Now, since they closed New Life uh, in April, I think two years ago, right, uh, they closed us down. But just because they closed us down, we're a church. You can't close down a church, right? You can do whatever you want to do, but the church remains. And so we've been going out. Yeah, because we can't get hung up in quote unquote buildings. That's right. I mean, I, that's that's right. the point. I'm sure you right. want to make. Right. And so we went to the highways and the byways and uh, places where you would not imagine people sleeping and giving them water, giving them food, giving them hope, asking them to join our leadership training program. And we've developed relationships with a lot of these individuals and we've seen progress with them getting their own place, uh, becoming sober, giving up drugs and alcohol, uh, getting their spiritual life together. And so we've seen progress. But most of the time we go out to let people know that there is a God, that you're made in his image, and that someone cares about you and loves you. Now, when you mentioned the winter patrols, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we going into the thrones of winter now. And, um, you know, it's real cold. In fact, right now, you know, we're getting some snowflakes and what have you. Yeah. Uh, has the homeless problem went away in St. Louis? Is there no homelessness? No. But what has happened... I mean, you say it's no homelessness? No, there is homelessness. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> but what's happened is, is, is that the city wants to say out of sight, out of mind. Right? Th they closed down New Life, which bedded sometimes 250 people or more. Right? And gave us Biddle House. And everyone bought the lie that Biddle House was going to be the solution to the homeless situation in St. Louis. And we see that it's not. Last year, two people died. Uh, one, in, I believe, in a porta potty, one in a dumpster, I believe, uh, died from, from extreme temperatures. We don't want that to happen this year. Uh, so the homeless problem has not gone away. What they've done is pushed them from one place to the other place. Biddle House is not the answer and not the solution. So what, are, <coughs> or what, are, what is New Life Evangelistic Center 
doing concretely for this year then? Right, we, we've opened up several uh, safe houses for women with children. We found that a lot of women uh, are coming to us with children, and so we've, we've provided for them. It's a little bit harder uh, for the men because we need more we need more of expansive space. Now, we should mention that New Life will be reopening for day services uh, within the next four months. But only day services. We are not going to be reopening uh, at, at the 14 site 11, on right. 1411 at 14, Locust. Right. Oh, 14, congratulations. Locus. Yes, praise the Lord. We thank you all for your prayers and all your support. Uh, so we'll be opening uh, for day services only. We have not come to a solution for the men other than offering to join our leadership training program, which will take them off the streets. Uh, they may be placed in, in, outside of St. Louis like New Bloomfield, Marshfield, Springfield, Joplin. But it will take them off the streets and room board is paid. If you want more information about the leadership training program, I'm more than happy to talk to you about it. Uh, let me give you... It's, uh, yeah, it's share number. the number there. Okay. The number is 314-421-3020. Uh, 314-421-3020. Uh, you can ask for me. I'm Pastor Mark, and I'll give you information about the leadership training program. So what, 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 actually, what capacity do you work for within uh, New, New Life? Life? Right. Um, I guess I'm a go-to. Right. <laughs> Most of the time, uh, people, I do different types of jobs uh, for the ministry. Uh, and I enjoy it because ne never two days are exactly alike. Okay. Right? So I do a great deal of different things to help Larry Rice in the ministry. Okay, then. Now, um, the safe houses. Mm -hmm. By how many, say, how many pe uh, people are you serving, servicing? One, two, uh, okay, there are about maybe three or four safe houses for women. They're only for women and they're only for children. Uh, only for women? Is there a maximum number of children that can be? Well, uh, we going? have we won't have one uh, young lady who has six. Wow. So uh, we don't like to put a maximum, we just want to help them. Wait a minute, let me stop you. We, okay. we gotta take a quick break and okay. we'll come back on that. All right. End. You can help New Life Evangelistic Center break the cycle of homelessness by providing monies for Metrolink tickets. It's absolutely essential at this time. New Life Evangelistic Center is providing hundreds of Metrolink tickets every week to homeless people so they can get to their jobs, so they can get to their doctor appointments, so they can find a place to sleep at nights. Will you please share your much-needed tax-deductible gift with the New Life Evangelistic Center? Every $30 you provide enables New Life to get 10 of the Metrolink tickets. And you can send those gifts now to the New Life Evangelistic Center at P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, that's 63166. These individuals are having to walk so far at this moment, and a Metrolink ticket means so very much. And not only does New Life Evangelistic Center desire to provide for the homeless throughout the greater St. Louis area, but also throughout the Springfield community. Your gifts are very much needed at this time. It's New Life Evangelistic Center, P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, that's 63166. Thank you for praying, caring, and sharing at this moment. If you can't receive NLEC TV on channel 24.2 on your TV, you can watch us on your home computer or laptop anywhere in the world. Simply type in NLEC TV, then select NLEC TV support and click on the small NLEC TV on the right of the menu bar. Click on the play indicator to start the live programming, the same programming as 24.2. You can then enlarge the picture and enjoy your favorite programs like the NLEC Worship with Larry Rice, the Bernie Hayes Show, Experience the Benefits of Change with Pastor Burris, Conversations with Zaki Baruti, News and Views, and so much more. Can you hear the music of creation? NLEC TV is also available on all mobile devices, such as smartphones and iPads. By getting the NLEC TV app, you can enjoy NLEC TV anywhere you go. Welcome back to Conversations with Zaki Baruti, and in the studio with me is Pastor Mark, uh, who is a do it all for New Life Evangelistic Center in terms of coordinating a number of different activities to help uh, 
the homeless. And I was uh, asking in terms of your project for this year, you was mentioning that you do, New Life Evangelistic Center do have about how many safe houses? We have about four or five, I believe four safe houses. We're opening up a, a fifth one. Uh, and these are basically for women uh, and children. We were getting lots of calls about women with children. And at the time, we did not have a safe house for, for children mm -hmm. and women. So now we do. So we, we've got like maybe four. We're going to open a fifth one up, right? And we take as many women and children as we possibly can take. Okay, then. Now, let me ask this question. Uh, so approximately how many people are you servicing at the safe house? How many well, people? Well, I don't know exactly the, the exact total, uh, but I know one safe house we're serving at least six, uh, six individuals, six women with their children. At one, at one location. We hope to expand that. We know the need is great. Right. Right. And even the need for the men. Now, the, the men have the alternative to join the leadership training program at this time. But we are still looking at, and we're fighting every day to help uh, the homeless have a shelter or a place they can sleep at night. And we're fighting every day for that. And if people's hearts weren't so cold, right, uh, and you know, the, the, the city whole, administrators and yeah. those who are of uh, power and wealth. Right. Well, let me ask this question then. Now, you did mention that uh, the New Life Evangelist Center on Locust will be open. Yes. Uh, in about four months. Yeah, we're looking at four yeah. to six months. There are certain repairs that have to be done uh, and certain codes we have to uh, fulfill for the city of St. Louis. Right, but we're, we're launching ahead. We're going ahead with this. Uh, and we, it'll be for day services only at this time. And when you talk of day services, what kind of services would well, that we entail? Well, we anticipate lots of different services. Uh, you'll be able to come in, take a shower, have a locker. Uh, you'll be able to get some life training skills. You'll be able to get the gospel, uh, the Bible, have Bible courses also. Uh, and some other facilities, some other services will be done there also. Now, you know, off uh, air, we were talking about uh, Reverend Rice and uh, I guess yourself maybe, uh, or somebody being arrested for yes. uh, feeding the hungry. Yes, it was. Uh, I mean, no, I mean, not in <laughs> this society. Uh, are you oh. going to tell me that they are going to, they arrest people for feeding people? Yes. Is that what you're trying to share with I, us? I am trying to share it with you. And actually, Reverend Ray and Chris Onimus, his uh, uh, friend that helps him, Right, uh, and they were passing out sandwiches uh, not less than maybe two weeks ago. Uh, and where were they doing that at? Near Christ Church Cathedral downtown. Right, okay. okay. Uh, and they were passing out sandwiches and so forth, and a police officer came to them and said, are you passing out sandwiches? Uh, and Reverend Ray said, yes, I am passing out sandwiches for the poor and the homeless. Uh, and there's a rule, I think, that has to be prepared in a, in a certain kind of kitchen if you're, if you're passing out food to the homeless. And Ray acknowledged it was paired in, 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 in a legal kitchen, according to the city. And they still gave him a ticket. They gave him a ticket. So and they prepared, they have, a, they have a law on the books in St. Louis mm -hmm. that in order to feed the homeless, you got to have a special kitchen right. to prepare the food. Right. And, and then, you as, pass, then you can pass it out. Otherwise, if, if I was to <laughs> make a bologna and cheese sandwich, and put mustard and mayo on it and put it in a plastic bag and give it out to someone, I would be in violation of the law. And what is the penalty for that violation, by the way? Well, they, tick they ticketed Reverend Rice, I mean, sorry, Reverend Ray, right, and his friend, uh, Chris, who's helping him, right? But when it came time to appear in court, the city said they didn't want to pursue it, okay. right? So they, they dropped the, the charges and everything else and everything is fine until the next incident. So we were asking individuals that have done this, who have passed out sandwiches from a legal kitchen, as you want to call it, right? If they have been harassed by the police or if they have been uh, ticketed, to please give us a call at 314-421-3020. It's 314-421-3020 because we want to get all these individuals together and see if we can form a case, a federal case against us. I know that's right. And that's why I was just asking, but if you don't, uh, were you aware of what is the so-called penalty for it? Do you know? I'm not aware of the penalty. I remember uh, maybe a year or two ago when uh, one of the aldermen was bringing this up and I couldn't believe that it was actually going to pass in the city of St. Louis. Right, it, so it's a citywide ordinance passed it, by all the aldermen. I believe it was. I'll have to research that more, but I remember at the time we were against this uh, ordinance, and so I, I believe it's the same ordinance that became law. Okay, then on that note, we'll have to take one last break. Hello, I'm Larry Rice, uh, director of New Life Evangelistic Center and NLEC TV, and I come to you now and I ask you just to please pray 
and consider becoming a partner with us here so that we can continue to keep conversations with Zaki Baroudi on the air. It's only because of the faithful support of individuals like you that we can provide this service along with a multitude of services to the poor, the fatherless, the widow, the hurting, and the homeless. Your prayers, your gifts right now are absolutely essential as we confront gentrification in our community of rich and powerful people that want the poor and homeless out of sight and out of mind. We're trying to get 1411 o open back up again. We can do that if you will help us. We can provide shelter once again. We're doing it in many other locations, but we need your help now to keep conversations with the key on the air and to help those that are hurting and need. And it's New Life Evangelistic Center, P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, that's 63166. Or you can discover us online by going to nlecstl.org. Thank you for praying, caring, and sharing at this critical hour. Thanks to New Life Evangelistic Center, thousands of mothers with children around the world can stay together. They can pursue their educations and they grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you to all of our Club 24 members who make this miracle happen. Hear this, you who trample the needy and do away with the poor of the land. Let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing stream. You trample on the poor and force him to give you grain. Therefore, though you have built stone mansions, you will not live in them. Though you have planted lush vineyards, you will not drink their wine. For I know how many are your offenses and how great your sins. You oppress the righteous and take bribes, and you deprive the poor of justice in the courts. Welcome back to Conversations with Zaki Baruti in studio with me for the last couple of minutes is Pastor Mark, uh, who has worked uh, very diligently for a number of years with New Life Evangelistic Center. Always going all the way back, actually, to uh, the age of 16. Yes. Uh, and I had a love for... for and you're a how old now? <laughs> I'm just saying, no, why, why, why did I even have to ask that kind of question? <laughs> well, what can I say? That's well, a blessing wherever age you're we're, at. We're, we're young at heart and old in spirit. <laughs> okay, then. All okay, right. so uh, it's been a, a wonderful uh, journey with uh, Reverend Rice and New York Evangelistic Center. You know, many ministries don't keep their heart with the homeless, right? You know, they, they outgrow it and, they, and, and becoming a passion it becomes a back burner item, right? Something mm -hmm. that we do maybe once a week or once a year, right? right? But Reverend Rice has been diligent for 40 something years, diligent about helping the homeless and the poor. Well, uh, again, just want to salute that work that he has done. Just want to salute you for, uh, you know, uh, supporting him. Uh, now, for anybody who want to help and assist in working with New Life Evangelistic Center, how do they get involved? I would say for them to call 421-3020, 421-3020. Is uh, that through area code 314? Yes, I'm sorry, 314. <laughs> and right. you can ask for me. My name is Pastor Mark, and I'll be able to help you from there. Okay, then. So, um, so in terms of uh, the whole issue of homelessness, before we close out, is that just peculiar to the uh, St. Louis region, or is this a nationwide epidemic? It's a na nationwide epidemic, nationwide. To counter that overall, what would you say, just the whole issue of homelessness, what would be your message to the masses of people who's listening to you now? Easy or, message, easy, oh, okay? Right. If we who believe in God and believe we were made in his image would just do what God tells us to do, it doesn't matter uh, if it's Islam, right, or if it's Christianity, right, if the good people who believe in God would just do what God tells them to do, there would be no homelessness. And what did God tell us to do? God told us to, to take them in as ourselves, to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, to take care of those who are, are the least of these. And that's very powerful. On that note, we only have a couple of seconds left. I just want to encourage everybody. You need to be involved with an organization or a movement, spiritual movement that's for the upliftment of people. On that note, uh, again, thank you for tuning in. Uh, and I want to just close out. God bless those who want to do work for, the, for God himself. Mm -hmm.